like I said in my last video, I've been doing a lot more electronics these days. And while I was at it, I thought I should just improve my skills generally. So I got a kit to practice surface mount, which isn't as scary as I thought it was. I've improved the lighting out here with a very bright light and, you know, magnification because my eyes aren't what they used to be. And I got one of these uh, solder tip cleaners, which I'd already seen recommended um, to replace just the old sponge. And I gotta say, I really like it. It works really well, except this shell it's in is super light. It's like a couple grams total, which means that when you use it, it's constantly skidding all over the place. And that's just not acceptable. So let's make a replacement case for it. Out of something like this. Should do, two and a half inch aluminum stock I happen to have on hand. Spent some time in CAD and came up with a design. Pretty simple little two piece, basically just the same thing, just out of turned aluminum and uh, cut this window in it with the mill. So let's go get started on that. So I need to do some cleaning up, but first let's talk sequencing. So there's the two parts and I wanna start with the bottom section. So I'll first cut off a chunk on the bandsaw, put that in the lathe and cut all of these the top of the bottom section. So this cavity, the lip, and do the threading. Then I can take that out, replace it with the rest of this stock, and cut the bottom of the top section. So the big cavity on the inside and the threading. Now that threading has to match this threading, and that'll work well because I'll have this small bit that I can easily test fit against. Um, so that'll work well. Then once this thread is done, I can leave the bottom section screwed in and just do a skim cut along the entire side of it so that the diameters match nicely and it all looks nice. Then I can part it off and flip it around. Now, unfortunately, I can't use the ID jaws on the chuck. They're just too big to fit on the inside of any of this. So I will have to chuck it up from the outside um, to do the final uh, bevel here. And I'll have to use brass shims so the jaws don't uh, mar the surface too much and if it's a little bit out of center doesn't matter at all this is all purely aesthetic just need to clean up the top face and cut that bevel um, and just within the accuracy needed to make sure that I don't you know breach through onto the inside and then we'll be done with the lathe work So now for some tricky work, I've got to cut the relief in there because I'm going to be single point threading it. So I need some space for the, the cutter to run out into. So I have this L cutter 
which is just something I ground up years ago. Uh, let's see if it works. This is often kind of a pain. So I did most of that off camera, but what I ended up doing was just plunging in and then going back and forth for a quarter of an inch um, on the DRO and just letting the spring pressure eat away a little bit each time, then plunge in a bit more and repeat. And it's uh, maybe eighth of an inch deep now, it's not bad. I think it'll work. So let's uh, switch over for threading. Here it is all done. It screws in nice and tight, leaving what I think is a an elegant little gap there. I, th I think I want to leave that. It's a it's a solid lock, um, so I think that's going to look really good and, and feel good. It won't be wobbling or or anything. That's nice and tight. This next part's going to be tricky. So there's this step in there from when I bored out the inner part and then the outer part and that needs to become a 45 degree taper. So I have the compound set up 45 degrees obviously with this boring bar and I'm just going in there and start picking away at it. I'm not sure how clean I'll be able to get the edges which is too bad because that will be somewhat visible through the window of the uh, you know where you stick the soldering iron but uh, we'll see how good we can do. So I started doing that and it wasn't looking right. The, the 45 definitely wasn't going to connect at the bottom when it connected at the top. So I started doing some measurements and realized I didn't cut this outer cylinder nearly deep enough. It's supposed to be 0.3 inches deeper. Just messed up a calculation in my head. Um, so I'm going to deepen that right now, um, which I can still do. I can get around the thread and do that. It won't be a problem. Um, and that's better to keep that because that'll then keep the top at a 45 degrees. I could cut this at a steeper angle, of course, but then I'd have to cut the matching one on top at a steeper angle, and I think that would look weird. So I'm just going to uh, deepen this by 0.3 inches. looks a lot more reasonable now. That's now a square shoulder, so I can cut it off with the 45 degree taper. I should note that by the very nature of this operation, I'm having to lean way over to get a good look in there at times. And that is, that can be quite dangerous because of the lead screw spinning on the lathe. But because of that, I've turned off the power feed on that. So it's stationary, the power feed is stationary. Nothing to snag me as I lean over. Um, though I'm still, of course, habitually checking that my hair is not in the way anyway. bad not bad at all just the last operation now um, cutting the window in there so it's mounted here at a 45 degree angle so this this surface at the, at the very apex is horizontal I want to cut down 0.2 inches and if I made everything like it is in the CAD I think that'll end up looking pretty good so let's find out So 
that is 0.21 inches deep and we're just starting to break through. So the shell was thicker than it should have been. I'll have to uh, try and figure out what I, what I did wrong there. But as for this, I'll just uh, keep going deeper until the window looks like it's a, you know, decent target for a soldering iron tip. there it is. Not bad for a two-day build, I don't think. I wasn't originally sure if I wanted a visible split line there, but I think I really like it now that I see it all the way done. And the little rubber feet really help it from sliding around. It's really stable now. And the, the mass to it is, the heft is just so nice and satisfying. And barely moves at all. Like I can just jam it in there. The brass is already compacting a bit, but there's plenty left over, so that would be a problem. So yeah, I think it'll be a nice addition to the desk. Thanks for watching and stay safe, everyone.